Hi guys, in today's video we are going to be discussing 5 things I think Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville got right. Please remember this is just a discussion video based on my own experience and you are more than welcome to disagree with my opinions. As usual, just before we begin, remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the content on this channel and want to help it grow. Anyway, let's get started. So let's begin with the festivals. Now I know that almost all of the Plants vs Zombies games have had festivals that involve new content, however Battle for Neighborville really took them to the next level. Each month the main hub world got a makeover with new decorations, weather, times of day and sometimes some additional quests or bit of content that could only be completed during the specific festival. Yes, you could argue the festivals were simply a result of this battle pass phase the gaming industry is going through at the moment, but I also think festivals have a great way to keep the players engaged. Each month there is always something new and exciting to look forward to, most notably the new look that Giddy Park gets, as well as the new costumes and update, even if a lot of the months have been a little bit underwhelming. By having each month feel special and different, it made things and moments in the game more memorable. Like I remember the snowmen you could shoot and make the heads roll around in January or the confetti cannons in February or the gnome boss you could fight in Giddy Park and earn the pot of gold during March. All of these little touches and memories are special and give you a sort of mental scrapbook of your time with the game. I definitely feel the festivals could have been fleshed out more and been even more memorable but having constant visual change throughout the game's life cycle has definitely kept parts of it fresh. The second thing I think Battle for Neighborville did well was the set of new characters. Yes, we unfortunately lost the variants from Garden Warfare 2, which ultimately has had a big impact on the game as a whole for a lot of people, but the nine new characters, including TV Head and Wildflower, I feel have been really well done and were a welcome addition to the teams. Yes, we had quite a lot of issues in terms of balancing and all that jazz, but the characters themselves, I feel, were created very well and certainly add some new playstyles, filling in some gaps in the teams. For example, we have nine Nightcap who brought us a super fast sneaky class or both Acorn and Space Cadet who brought a whole new element of teamwork into the mix becoming more powerful the more you work together. All of these really did add some nice changes and additions to how the game flowed and played. Next I want to talk about easter eggs, so I think this one probably is a bit of a minor one but I think BFN really had some good easter eggs in the game and is definitely an aspect of the Plants vs Zombies franchise I have always loved. I've done a number of BFN easter egg videos which featured some awesome ones like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle easter egg, the Giant Onion in Giddy Park and the Dark Souls Campfire in Peachy District. I also really admired the references when it came to the costumes and outfits, I always love finding Finding easter eggs they always put a smile on my face so I really hope this is something they continue with future games. Number four is the art style and I know this one is probably going to be the most controversial but for me I personally prefer the overall styling of Battle for Neighborville compared to the other shooters. Just to be clear this is just the art style how things look not necessarily what those things are. I actually much prefer the level design and craziness in Garden Warfare 2 but the overall look of BFN. I think one of the things is just the overall increase graphic fidelity, Garden Warfare 2 was released in 2016 and whilst it still looks really good, I think 3 years and the advancement in tech gave BFN more of a modern look. Arguably I think one of the things they did do in BFN was make the zombies kind of look more goofy rather than making them feel somewhat threatening when you compare it to the older games but I think the new visual style looks more aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. The final thing I think Battle for Neighborville did well was the free roam PVE areas, I think this was one of the natural progressions from Garden Warfare 2 that actually worked out well. Despite not getting a chance to complete all the free roam regions, I really think they were a great way to actually add some sort of story and give you lots of activities to change up from the regular multiplayer. I think one of my favourite parts of these areas were the giant mega bosses. These were some of the most memorable moments in the game, especially if you played it with a bunch of friends. There's something really satisfying about taking down a giant boss. I also think some of the missions were really creative, the dummy mission springs to mind. So if we do ever get a new shooter, I would like to see where they take the story mode next. 
Overall, with all the negativity around BFN, and particularly with the recent news, I thought it would be nice to highlight some of the positive aspects. As with all games, there's always both good and bad parts of it, and BFN isn't any exception. Anyway guys, that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. But other than that, remember to subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Bye.